Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma. I am flying solo here in my SCU studios for the very first ever cheat sheet, which I hope to make a regular scheduled program uh, sometime before the game kicks off, maybe a day or two, just to give all of you a little bit of information where maybe the game is being watched or how you can view it at home, particularly if you're not in the Pittsburgh area and you're in some crazy broadcast region, maybe where you can listen to the game. Uh, also, maybe some updated or just giving you another a refresh of the sports betting lines that are out there for the upcoming game and a few other tidbits such as some injury news. I'd actually hoped to have done this last week, but there really wasn't a whole lot of new information. So uh, if, if that's be a broken record. Some of this may have been covered in yesterday's episode. And for those of you that are out here that may be new, maybe you came across this program and you're like, hey, what's this all about? Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, of course, but go ahead and check out yesterday's episode with myself and Brian E. Roach as we really did more of a deep dive. Offense, defense, special teams, you name it, the coaches. And uh, we w took a look at uh, Sunday's upcoming game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. So let's get right down to it. Um, Sunday's game, 1 o'clock kickoff. That's going to be on your typical CBS network. So the, for those of you that are over in the Pittsburgh area, of course, nothing changes. Uh, the good news is for those of you who are not, you're going to get to see this game practically anywhere. This is courtesy of 506sports.com. If you go there, they also do the same thing for uh, the other windows. This is the early window, the 1 o'clock window on CBS and this is the Pittsburgh Steelers are in red. So as you can see, if you're on the West Coast, for those of you listening, you're going to get this game. Uh, the only areas that are really problematic, of course, is if you get into the southern states, uh, down into Florida, parts of Georgia, Alabama, um, Indiana, portions of Illinois, Ohio, and up, uh, of course, where Baltimore, where the Ravens, their general area, some of the New York teams and things like that, practically everywhere else through the Carolinas, Tennessee, of course, Pennsylvania, uh, portions of upstate New York, everyone is going to get the Steelers and New England Patriots. It's going to be a little bit of fun. The lines over at BUSR, one of our sponsors here at the Steel City Underground podcast, the line has not moved whatsoever. The Steelers, two and a half point underdogs are getting two and a half points at home. Almost unheard of. 108 on the money line with an over and under of 40 and a half. Uh, so check that out. And of course, I want to uh, direct anyone who may be listening to this program. I'm going to try and put some of this information in the show notes, but check out the link that will go uh, up on SteelCityUnderground.com with the most current information. Usually, uh, at least the morning of, if not a day before, it'll be up on Saturday morning at SteelCityUnderground.com, and that will be the companion, uh, the written article companion to this cheat sheet, also called the Steelers Game Day Cheat Sheet as well. Very clever thinking on my part, right? Uh, of course, uh, so you get to see some of the records, some of the numbers. You could check out, of course, I'll give you a little bit of a preview here for those of you who are viewing us on YouTube. Thank you for doing so. By the way, we love each and every one of you. The series notes, I'll go through some of this the game day information you see the tv coverage there and uh some of the steelers tv affiliates I, I'm, they're too numerous for me to even go through all the way around and at the bottom we also have the uh radio affiliates including the flagship stations if you're in the pittsburgh area wdve fm 102.5 and w uh, B -G -G -A -M 970 of course, uh, this is what's simulcast with uh, Bill Hillgrove uh, as your play-by-play -play guy and Craig Wolfley. And of course, if you have the ability to, you can uh, log in Steelers.com, the Steelers app. But of course, keep in mind, some of that is uh, regional broadcasting stuff. There's certain licensing. 
I want to say laws. There probably is some law against it because there's somebody somewhere that's on their couch and they're trying to stream the game and they end up getting in trouble. <laughs> so uh, just keep that in mind. There are nefarious ways to get around some of these cutting corners. I am staying within the legal methods that don't get me kicked off of the various platforms that our own podcast airs on. So keep that in mind. Bear with me here. Uh, but the TV, the TV coverage is excellent for this game, but I just want to get out ahead of next week. The week three contest at the Cleveland Browns will be all exclusive to Amazon Prime unless you are in the immediate Pittsburgh broadcast area of the flagship station, such as KDKA CBS Channel 2. Uh, in fact, that might not even be a KDK CBS Channel 2. Let me double check. Uh, but you know what I mean. If you end up in that specific area, uh, that's exactly uh, where you'll be able to still get it over the air, often antenna or as part of your local TV packages, should you have, I don't know, cable, direct TV, you've got the YouTube TV or the Hulu with live TV, something of that nature. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. I believe we had this information come out earlier. Oh, it's over at WPXI, uh, Channel 11 in Pittsburgh. So uh, apologies, not on KDK Channel 2, but that will be this week. I'm talking next week. So I'm ahead of myself, but I just want to let everybody be a little more prepared to know. I know some of you are going to be working maybe a little late. You get home on a Thursday night and all of a sudden you're flipping channels. You're like, where where the hell is this game at? Uh, it's no longer an NFL network thing. They sold the rights over to Amazon. So I just wanted to make that clear to all the folks that are listening and get ahead of that. Uh, I see this. I'll see this. I try not to play it my on my phone when I'm at the games, but you know, it's like 1230 quarter to one. If it's not the anthem and I'm standing there at attention or something like that, or introductions and you know, you're geeked up. I'm looking and people are like, Hey, where can I watch the game? It's not on here or blah, blah, blah. Or they cut it off or whatever. Uh, so just to try and this is the whole point of the cheat sheet <laughs> to try and get everybody ahead. So I hope it's informative there, at least from a viewing broadcasting perspective. Of course, if you have the NFL plus package with the ability to replay the games, just turn off all of your devices, ignore the world for about three or four hours, come back around four, four 30. And hopefully nobody has texted you the score and, or called in or anything like that, or somebody else in your house is going nuts watching it live. Well, if they were able to watch it live, you would too, I guess. But this is for the folks that might be watching it on delay, or you have to work on a Sunday and can't catch all of it. NFL plus is actually a pretty decent deal right now. I get nothing for saying that by the way, but you can check that out there as well. Just some serious notes about the upcoming game with the New England Patriots. Well, you know what? Let's go to the injury report first. I think this is um, probably something that's a, that we've uh, weighed in on, and it's really tough or difficult for us to get a full analysis show. And then and like if we were doing this, we'd be recording, and then most of you wouldn't even have like a full maybe 24 hours sometimes to be able to watch our programming, which is never good. So uh, in order to update and fill you in here, Steelers had full participants. We didn't have the full Thursday practice information when we went on um, air, so to speak, uh, just a day earlier. So Najee Harris, we had some limited practices, but Cam Hayward, who showed up there, was non-injury related. Mason Cole showed up with an ankle as he had on Wednesday, but everyone on the list, Najee Harris, Levi Wallace, Robert Spillane, Mason Cole, and of course Cam Hayward was non-injury related, but they were all full participants in practice on Friday. That means uh, they will be available to play on Sunday. And that's some good news for the Steelers, especially for Najee Harris, who had been dealing with his foot injury. And he had been talking uh, about... He'd been feeling good. You know what I mean? They've been asking Deontay Johnson about his shoulder too. And he said he didn't really think about it in the moment of making that one-handed catch the other day. On the New England Patriots side of things, Mac Jones, he was actually out of practice on Thursday. And that was a byproduct, believe it or not, of just an illness. Uh, they still had him listed on the injury report as back, but then they switched that and flopped that back over to illness. The one to keep an eye on, uh, most of the, the Patriots had uh, two full participants. Mac Jones, of course, a full participant on Friday, and he's expected to start on Sunday against the Steelers at Akershire Stadium, right? 
full practice for uh, linebacker Jawan Bentley. He is a starter. That is an important one. He was a, a DNP on Wednesday and limited on Thursday. Uh, sounds like he's going to be available. Limited practice for Joshua Bledsoe, a safety. Uh, Adrian Phillips, who's kind of in a reserve role. But uh, again, the when you're using these sub packages with all of these defensive backs, he's somebody who factors in and may not be available for Sunday. So it's going to be next man up there as well as a reserve cornerback, Sean Wade, uh, Pierre strong shows up here too, a reserve running back. One of the more interesting, uh, two interesting names that end up showing up at the bottom of this list. Trent Brown offensive tackle will be lined up against Alex Highsmith, who had three sacks against the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow last week. Uh, he shows up limited on Thursday and Friday with an ankle. And now Raquan McMillan, middle linebacker with a thumb. So Patriots got a little bit of dings and injuries here, but it doesn't seem like there's anything too over the top serious with most, most of their starters should be available. Of course, the centerpiece of all of that being Mac Jones at the quarterback position. Uh, should be good to go unless something crazy happens on the travel uh, over the Pittsburgh. So uh, to continue and carry on here, let's see. I'm going to try and go a little further down our list here and all time series notes with the Patriots and Steelers. This was an interesting kind of tidbit that I did want to uh, throw out to everyone that's listening or watching to the show, wherever you are, the Steelers actually lead the all time series between the the, the uh, Patriots, 15 to 13, but it hasn't been very much smooth sailing in the Mike Tomlin era. And as we know, the Patriots weren't quite the the steady organization or franchise pre-Bill Belichick uh, for the most part. I know the big tuna was there for a little bit too, so they turned it around, but, you know, ancient history type stuff, right? Patriots uh, last one. Uh, against the Steelers, 33-3. to That was that opener. Ben Roethlisberger got hurt right after that. That was week one, September 8th, 2019. Steelers actually have the edge at home, 12-10. to They last won in 2018. That was kind of the crazy year where the Patriots lost to, uh, their only five losses were all to non-playoff teams that season and still uh, went out there and got to the Super Bowl. Uh, the, away, uh, the away slate here, of course, for the Patriots advantage seven to four. It's not really that important when we're talking about the Steelers having a game at home in Pittsburgh. Patriots have won five of the last six. Mike Tomlin is three and seven against the New England Patriots. Well, Bill Belichick is 12 and 11 with some of those games, of course, coming head to head with Bill Cower. So over the course of this time period and the 10 games between Mike Tomlin and Bill Belichick here, three and seven, only the three victories. That's uh, that's a little rough. That's a little rough. That's a little rough, but uh, Hopefully the Steelers can uh, figure it out, do something about it, and come away uh, with their second straight victory. Of course, the Patriots, they're on their way to their second uh, road game in a row. They traveled last week down to Miami and uh, faced the Dolphins and, and a loss. Not necessarily maybe the worst loss, but you have Mac Jones who got strip sacked, et cetera, et cetera. Again, check out some of the statistics uh, and some of the analysis that we have uh, over on SteelCityUnderground.com or the previous episode. I don't want to get too far out of this, but Mac Jones was 21 of 30 for 70% completed last uh, week with 213 yards and a uh, touchdown and the interception. And uh, he's looking for his fourth Game in a row on the road with 200-plus passing yards. Damian Harris had 58 yards from scrimmage, 48 rushing, and 10 receptions. Uh, let's see. As far as wide receivers, Devontae Parker made his debut last week with the Patriots. If you remember, he came over from the Dolphins and faced his former team. Six catches for 59. Uh, he had six catches for uh, 59 yards in his last game against the Steelers, but that was back in 2019. Let's see. Hunter Henry he set... Um, uh, some career highs the last time he played against the Steelers. That was back with the Chargers once again, 2019. A lot of these guys haven't seen the Steelers for a couple of years, and they were with different teams. So we'll see how that works out. Matt Judon, one of their kind of prized linebackers that they signed last season, five tackles and a sack last week. J uh, Jawan Bentley, who I was talking about on the injury report, he led the team with seven tackles and had a sack last week as well. Dietrich Wise had a sack in his third career forced fumble last week, and he also had a sack and a forced fumble in the last meeting between the Steelers and the Patriots. And in looking from the Steelers side, of course, Mitchell Trubisky, 194 yards and a touchdown, no turnovers last week in his very own debut. 
His only career start against the New England Patriots, 333 yards and two touchdowns. Also had two interceptions, but he also ran for a career high, 81 yards and a touchdown. That was back in 2018. His Pro Bowl season with the Chicago Bears, the second year in the league. Uh, has some success against the AFC East, the nine touchdowns and a 90.7 rating and four career starts against those teams, the others being the Bills, Dolphins, and the New York Jets. Najee Harris had his touchdown catch last week. Um, he has, let me see, uh, 115.8 yards per game and five touchdowns and nine home games last season. So we got to hope that Najee gets the train running and he's a healthy, uh, team high receptions, seven catches, 55 yards last week with Deontay Johnson. And he's been pretty successful against the AFC East as well. Chase Claypool, 54 scrimmage yards, Pat Fryermuth, five catches for a career high, 75 yards last week. Aims for his fourth straight game with five plus catches. I think he'll get there. Oh, let's see. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. We got a lot to talk about him. AFC player, D defensive player of the week. However, doesn't make the top five, nor do any Pittsburgh Steelers for the for the uh, pro football focus defensive players of the week. D no Steelers. Not Alex Highsmith with three sacks. Not TJ Watt with, what did he have? Like 40 sacks and like a bunch of you know, an interception and <laughs> just absolutely crazy. And of course, Minka with the fit, uh, with the pick six, he had uh, four, um, 14 tackles, which was a career high and a 31 yard uh, interception last week. That's his four, for a touchdown. That's his fourth career uh, pick six, fourth player ever with pick six and four of first five career seasons. And of course, uh, he had a forced fumble and a fumble recovery in his last game against the New England Patriots. But that's going back to week, I believe week two this is in 2019, when he was still with the Miami Dolphins right before getting traded in week three to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's some really interesting info. Also, Miles Jack had uh, 10 tackles, one for a loss and a pass deflection last week in his debut with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cam Hayward, a sack and fumble recovery in week one, uh, seven tackles in his last meeting with the New England Patriots. He looks for his fifth uh, game in a row at home with at least a half sack as well. So he's been a force playing in front of the hometown crowd. Don't have a whole lot to speak for as far as the leaders when it comes to these the leaderboards with these teams. It's kind of wonky just because there's only one week into the season. So, of course, the Steelers have uh, 23 points, four, where the Patriots only scored seven last week on offense, totaling 267 yards, 271 yards that the Patriots had. So they're pretty evenly matched as being kind of mediocre offenses at this point. Uh, of course, the points for some of those coming off of that Minka Fitzpatrick pick, pick six as well. Both teams gave up 20 points last season. The Patriots only gave up 307 yards of offense to the Miami Dolphins, whereas the Steelers ended up giving up 432. But keep in mind, they also played a full extra quarter of football. They are plus five and they take a uh, takeaway giveaway category where the Patriots are a minus three last week. So you got to hope that the Steelers defense keeps this rolling, uh, even without TJ Watt, who was placed on injured reserve. So those are the uh, main big notes there as far as uh, the game and the statistics. If you're looking uh, as far as just some other information, of course, CBS, it's going to be the same broadcast crew. E Ian Eagle, Charles Davis. Uh, the games are on uh, satellite radio. If you have Sirius or XM, that's also available on the internet with both feeds, uh, whether that's the Steelers or the Patriots feed. Uh, the Steelers feed, of course, I mentioned earlier, Bill Hillgrove, Craig Wolfley. This is also available on ESPN radio network nationally with Chris Carlin and Sal Powell. Antonio calling the game. And last but not least, Land Clark is our referee. One o'clock, Acrisure Stadium, capacity of 68,400. We'll see if the building gets packed. Uh, we'll see how everybody reacts to Mitch Trubisky making his first home start in the newly named stadium, the first regular season game in what was formerly. Looking over at the sign behind me, Heinz Field, and everyone's going to be yelling for this guy if you see the bobblehead with Kenny Pickett there. My name is Joe Kuzma. Let me know in the comments. Send us some messages. Let me know if you like this information, getting you up to speed. Uh, hopefully filled in some blanks for those of you who are looking where to watch the game, where to listen to the game, where to bet on the game, how to bet on the game. <laughs> we got a little bit of everything, a little potpourri here, the injury updates. And, of course, uh, looking like most of, the, most of the squads are fairly fully healthy. The Steelers, of course, minus 
TJ Watt, uh, who, uh, again, will sit out at least four weeks before he's eligible for a return. But hearing that he doesn't even have a brace, a wrap, a sling, or anything else on, that's pretty good. I wanted to keep this even shorter than what it was now. But, of course, I appreciate your feedback. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Follow us uh, over at SteelCityUnderground.com and our social media channels uh, for more information, details, and stuff. Even during the game, we'll shoot the breeze with you as best we can. My name is Joe Kuzma, and as we close out the show each and every time, we like to remind our listeners and viewers out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 